scripture, this sermon title was picked out <laughs> two or three weeks ago, kind of ironic. It's almost like the good Lord, uh, you know, it's almost like you can see in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Which he can, right? I mean, all right. So, okay, so I told y'all, huh. Now, my little diagnosis business, I kind of, you know, that was kind of the way I was going to start, uh, was, guess what? Everything's rocking along all right. I was sitting at home Sunday, last Sunday afternoon, uh, working on whatever I was working on on my little laptop and getting this, the, the house line rings. We don't ever answer the home line. Don't call me on the home line if you want to talk to me. I walked over there and looked at it and said cardiology, cardiology or cardiovascular or something. It was a Tyler number. I'm like, I saw somebody trying to solicit, you know. I don't know what that's all about. So I didn't answer it. About 30 seconds later, my, my cell phone starts going off. You know, but it's the same number. Right? It's, the, it's the cardi. And that, it, when I answered, I remember and heard her voice. I knew her husband is a cardiologist, and her dermatology practice is, is just on the, off the side of it. So I guess when they call, it says cardiovascular or whatever, associates or something of that nature. But anyway, so, you know, everything's great, right? And then, wham, you get hit by a... a, a, a 18 wheel or a tra freight train and, and it all changes. You got a y'all got a call a little over a year ago and your world changed, right? Forever. I mean it was like wow. I mean it was it was life altering. I mean it, it, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <coughs> Guess what? We're not the first people to ever have that happen. As old Solomon said in, in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun, right? It's all been done before. Everything has happened before. So, we joined the disciples this morning, and Jesus has just been crucified and buried and they are holed up in a, in, a, in a room, in a house. And they are, the door is bolted. And they are trembling with fear because they know they're next, right? I mean, they followed this guy for three years. Everybody knows who they are. They're hiding out. They're, they're going out, you know, kind of like some of the young people do with their hoodies on. You know, they're, they're, they're going out kind of, you know, trying to, trying to duck under the security cameras and what have you, you know, so that they don't, nobody sees them. You know what I'm saying, right? They're, they're, they're trying to be incognito. They probably got a secret knock. Something like that so they know it's okay to open the door and let Mary Magdalene and them come in, you know, whoever is coming to the door, you know. So they, it's all, and they're halfway expecting any time for the authorities to come banging on the door, right? They're expecting that any time for the, the temple police, if you will, the police from the temple, the, the, the guards from the temple to come and, and, and drag them off. And, 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 and they're, they're going to be next, right? So, so, you know, there's kind of a, an interesting thing. You know, there's a lot of commands in Scripture. But there's one of them that, that appears more than, than any other. And guess what it is? Fear not. Fear not. <clears throat> Have you been living behind locked doors? Have you been living somewhere? And, and part of your life, you know, you don't want to show to some people. Because you're afraid what their response might be. Are you afraid at your workplace to let people know that you're a Christian? Because you're afraid you might be ridiculed for it. 
Are you afraid to let your, your gay friends know you're a Christian? Because you're afraid they will call you a homophobe. I mean, that's, that's where we are today, right? They were, they were living in fear. They felt like God had abandoned them. There was Jesus, the Messiah. They had followed him. And Peter had even told, and when Jesus said one time, I'm going to be, the Son of Man is going to be taken by the authorities. He's going to be beaten. He's going to be crucified. And Peter's like, get over here. Heaven forbid that that happens to you. I won't stand for it. Remember? And Jesus turned to the others and he said, get behind me, Satan. Because you're wanting man's way, not God's way. Oh, but we're, I think sometimes we're like the disciples in whatever the situation that we find ourselves in. And, and, and we think God has abandoned us, that we've got it on our own, that, that we ain't, you know, how are we going to get through this? Lord have mercy, we are, we are without hope. Sometimes it feels that way, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you can relate. We can all relate. Uh, I think we've all been in a place where we've thought, how in the world am I going to get through this? Huh? Well, there's good news. <laughs> there's good news. He's standing there among us, right? He's standing there among us. Oh, uh, I'll tell y'all a little episode that happened. And part of what, and I, I would encourage you to do this, when things happen, when you get hit with that freight train, that, that semi-tractor trailer, what have you, as soon as you can gather your wits, which, you know, you may have to make a phone call or two, you may have to, I don't know. But begin reflecting on how God has, has, has delivered you in the past. How He has showed up. At times when you thought you were on your own, when, when it was hard, when, when you had been slammed by something in this world, remember how God got you through that. And if you're like me, I've got a laundry list of them. Because God always shows up. If you call on His name and you seek Him with your whole heart, God will show up. Amen. Here's these disciples. They were afraid that, that somebody was going to beat on the door and, and, and bust in on them. And, and they, were, they were done for, right? It was the end. It's kind of dramatic that uh, there's no knock on the door. There's no dramatic entrance. There's no blast of a trumpet, the archangel singing. Nothing like that. Jesus is just standing there among them. He just appears. Shazam, Gomer Pyle would say. <laughs> Some of y'all may remember Gomer. <laughs> Shazam! You know, and that's what I'm sure old Peter may have, they may have coined that phrase. Peter may have done that. He may have said, Shazam! It's Jesus! <laughs> But there he was. He was standing before him, and, and, and there was no sound. He showed up. To their amazement, they were stunned. That ain't what they were expecting, right? I mean, this was not ordinary. Here comes Jesus. And maybe he even walked through that locked door. Maybe he just, you know, I don't know. Well, but he was standing there in their midst. In the middle of their fear, there stands the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And what is the first thing that he says? Peace be with you. Peace. Oh. Now I'm going to suggest to you too. 
Now, what do you think they thought at that moment? And he's showing them his hands and his feet and all that stuff. Did they believe then? Did, it, did they have an aha moment? An epiphany? Did they get hit over the head with a two by four and clubbed? And he's, they're like, I think they did. <laughs> None, nobody that was in that room that day walked out of there doubting that Jesus Christ had been raised from the dead and that he was there bodily in that room with them because he showed them his hands and his feet. That may be you. We're, we're the salt of the earth. Uh, and to remind, you know, just that we are, we're everywhere. We're in every profession. We're in every workplace. We're in every family, uh, every club and organization and all that stuff. We're scattered like salt everywhere because we're supposed to see, be seasoning. We're supposed to be there to shine the light of Christ into this world. Just because you believe that Jesus is there with you in the middle of your drama or whatever you're going through or your worst nightmare, does that mean the person standing next to you or sitting next to you believes it? <coughs> Funny thing, Thomas, one of the other disciples, wasn't there that day. And he came at the door, I guess, later and with the secret knock, and they let him in. And they're like, man, you should have been here. Jesus showed up. He was standing here among us. He showed us his hands, his feet, and his side. And, and you know, they were all excited and all that stuff. What, what did old Thomas say? Unless I see the holes in his, in his hands, his feet, and his side, I won't believe it. Huh? Now, did Thomas's lack of faith, you think it caused the, the people that did believe, that were there, to disbelieve that Jesus was there? They knew it, right? I mean, they had observed it. They had felt his body. They had seen the risen Lord, and they did not doubt it at all. God's going to show up. <laughs> He's going to show up in your in whatever you're going through, whatever I'm going through, whatever Kim's going through in our family. God's going to show up. I believe that 110%. I do not doubt that at all. Peace be with you. <laughs> dog. Woo! In that instant, in that instant, the, the, the disciples' grief turned to joy. I mean, deep, the deepest grief you could ever experience was where they were at. As, as, as we used to say in Alabama, lowering a snake's belly in a wagon rug. You know, that's where, where they were at. They were low. And all it took was one word from Jesus, or three words, and him appearing there, peace be with you. Bam! Shazam! You know? They're, they, they pivoted on a dime and they were elated. They were, whoo, hallelujah. They got, you know, if the Holy Spirit had been there, they would have got Pentecostal. <laughs> I assure you. <laughs> whoo. What a, you know, discipleship. You know, we talk a lot about discipleship around here. One definition of discipleship is learning to live without fear. Learning to live without fear. One, one interpretation of that is learning to trust in God and, and not be uprooted and, 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 and thrown about by the winds of this culture and, the, and, and whatever can happen to us. Jesus has already conquered everything we fear. It's kind of ironic, too, that... Uh, Jesus was placed in a tomb 
sealed off, right? He was behind a locked, if you do a locked door, a locked compartment. <coughs> he arose from the dead. The stone was rolled away and he walked out of there <coughs> by the power of the Spirit of God. And where does he go? He goes to a locked room <laughs> where the disciples are, are, are paralyzed with fear. And, and they're locked in there with fear-constricted chests. If you've ever been so afraid you couldn't breathe, you know, you just... <sighs> that you just felt like you were going to smother. I mean, just... That's where they're at. They're, they're just smothering in their fear. And Jesus comes in and says, Peace be with you. And he breathes on them. He breathes. And these, these disciples that have been have fear constricted chests, they breathe fully in the Spirit of God. The same Spirit of God that, that filled Jesus in his baptism, the same Spirit that anointed him with power to proclaim the good news, the same Spirit that strengthened him on the way up Calvary's hill, the same Spirit that raised him from the dead, that same Spirit that is poured out on you and on me, they breathed it in. And oh, their bonds were, were, were broken. Their shackles of fear were, were cut off. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. But I know one thing. My God's going to show up. My God is going to show up and he's going to show out. And I believe that. I know that. And I'm looking for him to show up. And I'm trusting in him and his peace is with me and with Kim and with our family. And we're, we're I just hope that I'll, I'll proclaim his goodness and his mercy and his hope in a way that's pleasing to him and not be ashamed and, and not be afraid to tell anybody what God has done. All right, so today, to close out the service, uh, we're going to do something different. <laughs> Imagine that. We're going to do one more thing, and that's it. I want y'all to come up here, too. 